Good evening, everybody. We may have another 30 seconds or so before top of the hour, but we want to go ahead and get everybody online as quick as possible. Thank you for joining us for online services. As uh, most of you know that we had a case of COVID in the church, and so it's kind of quarantined the church uh, till next Sunday, uh, not, the, not this Sunday, but next Sunday. And uh, the person with, with the virus is doing well, just mild symptoms, but yet uh, we're just playing uh, it cautious and making sure people are not fearful. Don't be afraid. God's in control. God's going to help you and take care of you and take care of all of us. But we are uh, back to these type of services for the next few services. And uh, we, we thank you for joining us. Uh, are we having technical difficulties? All right. I hope everybody, if you can join in, let us know that you're watching. Uh, would you put a shout out on there on Facebook and say you're here, you're a part of it? Would you let other people know that may not realize that we're meeting online again uh, for a little while? Uh, text them. Uh, shoot them an email or something, let them know. T tune into Rushing Wind Radio. Uh, it is piggybacking this uh, uh, broadcast at uh, Rushing Wind Radio. So you can go to our, our website and click on uh, that and uh, get the broadcast. So uh, are we doing okay? Everybody, is people here? Are they everybody joining on? We're going to have a word of prayer. And then we're going to sing page 362, Draw Me Near or I Am Thine, O Lord. But let's pray. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for the sick sick in the church. And uh, Matt, uh, Brother Matt, let's pray for uh, the others that are having uh, other issues that uh, uh, we just need to pray for them. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for our church. Thank you for loving us and uh, letting us be a part of the church, the universal church. Thank you, God, that you... Uh, saved us, you sealed us, you're, you're going to take us to heaven. We, we glorify your holy name for letting us, even though in the midst of uh, sickness, we can still meet together and worship together and sing together. I pray you'll get glory and honor from the message tonight, from the singing. Uh, may it uh, help your people, Lord. Uh, would you draw people to the, the broadcast, let people uh, participate and, and uh, remember that uh, these are hours in which we need to worship you. God, fill me with your spirit, I pray. Eradicate any wicked thing in my mind or heart that I might be able to glorify thee. God, thank you again uh, for uh, this broadcast and for our church. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're having any tif de technical difficulties, please type it in there. Abby's running the sound in the, the Facebook Live uh, tonight and Sunday, and so she's kind of learning curve. But uh, grab your songbook. Abby's going to turn it to the screen. And so if you don't have a songbook, you can sing along with us, and I hope you will. So uh, she, Abby's going to sing with us harmony, right? As she turns the... Uh, uh, turns the, the words to the screen. She's multitasking tonight. Uh, but uh, uh, as soon as she picks up her microphone and uh, turns the words on the screen, we're going to get there eventually uh, uh, on page 362. Here we go. Let's all sing together. Draw me nearer, nearer. 
running over to get you back. Screen on here. A couple of prayer requests. Leslie's going to sing in a moment, and then we'll sing another song. But uh, a couple of prayer requests that I do want to make mention of is uh, continue to pray for Kay. Uh, she had her thyroid out, and she's recovering. And David, David's got a little fluid around his heart. They're going to be working on him. Uh, I think medication at first, but uh, please pray for David. Also, uh, Carolyn Jean Neal that uh, uh, loved our church. They moved in for uh, for work for a little while, and then their work moved them out. Uh, he he asked prayer for uh, Miss Carolyn and uh, just lift her up in prayer. God knows all about it. Uh, and then uh, Dusty um, uh, Dusty. Line bear. I couldn't think. I had it. Sorry, Miss Dusty. Uh, you said that your, I think it was your brother that had a COVID in hospital respirator, and his wife also has it, but it's at home. So we want to pray for these folks. Also, continue to pray for our church folks, Miss Sue, Miss Lola. Uh, lift up Miss Lola. Folks, call Miss Lola, would you? Please call Lola and Sue and uh, Miss Pat Deaton and uh, Miss. Uh, um, uh, also, Gray Day, Faye Hewitt, and I, I think of. Uh, Lynn, uh, CW, please pray and call for these folks and, and, and talk to them, pray with them, and try, try to be encouragement in these times of, of sickness and, and, and aggravation. So um, I do want to invite everybody on the 21st, is the not this Sunday, but the next Sunday we'll be meeting back unless there's other issues that prevent us to, but the 21st is Father's Day. We have Father's Day gifts already lined up for all the men, and then we have uh, a special day. It is it is uh, end of the year uh, awards for our Christian school, and so we're uh, going to have a big celebration there. Also, uh, our school administrator, Miss Susan, hello Miss Susan uh, Fields, who's been administrator for 18 plus years. Uh, is retiring and so we're going to have a little celebration for her and some awards and and uh, for her and, and we want you to be uh, part of that celebration and so other exciting things too so we're looking forward to that on the uh, 21st just uh, a week uh, uh, two weeks away or one hour 10 days away or so so um, I think Leslie's going to sing now Abby's doing a fantastic job and she she's juggling all that back there and she doesn't really work it enough to know what she's doing but uh, she's pulling it off right Abby is everybody having a good time at home? Uh, this is weird because there's not but three people in this building, but uh, I see a fourth man who looks like unto the Son of God. Amen? And uh, we might be in the fire, but Jesus is in there with us. Les is going to sing a song. Remember, I know you're at home or in your car or somewhere at work. You can still worship the Lord. So let's worship. I walk by the tomb of Buddha, looked inside and saw his bones, traveled on to see was no longer in the grave if you knew him like i know him you would know that he's alive if you
Praise the Lord. I hope they got you shouting at home and the neighbors calling the police because you're so rowdy. Hallelujah. We're going to sing a congregational at the cross now. And uh, I want you to get it, get in your songbook and get ready. If not, I think Abby's going to try to send it over to the, the screen again. 264 in your songbook. <coughs> we'll sing first, second, last. If you're concerned about your offerings, you can send them. Just do like you did before. It'll be okay. God's going to take care of that. So if you can stand, stand. Uh, if not, just let's sing together. You ready? in the book of Esther tonight. And before we get there, I want to read Psalms. Some of you are, can get discouraged. I can too. But, you know, the Bible says in Psalms 150, verse 6, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So we're going to praise the Lord in the midst of this troubles and trials and aggravations and uh, sicknesses and all that kind of stuff. We're going to honor the Lord with uh, our voices. We're going to honor the Lord with our substance. We're going to make sure that Jesus is glorified in all that we do. Uh, I hope you have contacted somebody, get people on. Uh, there has been a sad thing that's happened uh, over these last few months. Uh, we've lost folks from uh, tuning in uh, to the broadcast. The folks have not come to church and understand some of that being there's a, a, a fear of getting sick. Uh, and I understand that and God understands that, but... Uh, uh, if, if you're not attending, you should be watching the broadcast or listening on the radio. Or, uh, of course, you can drive up and, and, we're, and you can park in the parking lot, listen to the... Uh, make sure those speakers aren't outside. That, that button pushed in but down on the bottom there, down on the floor to the right, there's a button. Laugh, Abby, you don't know what it is. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's on the right-hand side, big black box there, and, and you push the little button and it turns it on. Uh, but anyway, we're in Esther... We're in Esther chapter 2, and uh, last week, if you, if you didn't uh, watch or attend last week and, and uh, participate in the services, we're going to be going through the book of Esther on Wednesday nights for, until we get finished, and uh, it's an interesting book that uh, God laid on my heart to study. Uh, it's interesting how, how people act and react in times of trials and tri tribulations. It's a wonderful thing to see how God works things together for good to those that love Him. 
Uh, here, uh, as we finish chapter number 1, we just got to chapter, uh, verse number 9 last week, but as we finish chapter 1 tonight, I want you to uh, notice something. Uh, notice uh, that what drinking alcohol does. Uh, in this chapter, you see that there was a law given, that the law was that they were going to drink. And uh, matter of fact, I'll read you that verse, and it says, "...and the drinking was according to the law." None did compel, for so the king had appointed to all the officers of his house that they should do according to every man's pleasure. And when society and when uh, churches all start to say, you know, it's, it's okay uh, to drink. We know that the federal law, the state laws allow for drinking. There's laws that are on the books that say it's okay to drink. Uh, it's okay to even get drunk, uh, the laws of the land. Uh, you have to be 21, but a lot of times a lot of younger people uh, drink alcohol. But you look at what it does and what it has done to our world. Uh, we we concerned about the deaths of, uh, of the coronavirus, but there's far more people dying of alcoholism and car wrecks and drunk driving and so forth. M millions are affected by it every year. Uh, my wife was uh, hit by a drunk driver in 1995, almost killed her, put her in the hospital for three days, broke her clavicle and her in her sternum and, and, and sprang her ankles and it was a terrible situation. And the guy that hit her died and he had been arrested previously for alcohol, uh, drunk, and dry, drunk driving. So we, we see that alcohol destroys relationships. It breeds satanic activity. Uh, all types of alcohol. I, I don't care if it's wine. I don't cook with it. I it was a chef at one time, and when I got saved, December 5th, 1993, I stopped using wine. I know people say, well, it cooks off, it cooks off. The fact is, you've got to go to the store and buy it, and, and it's the appearance of evil. People don't think you're putting it on something to cook it off. They're thinking you're getting drunk. If you just drink one beer, they, they say, well, I'm not drinking to get drunk, but people, they assume the worst. We want to have a great testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as social drinking. If you want to do some social something, do some social distancing. Amen? No, no funnies at all there. But uh, in Esther chapter 1 and verse 10, we're going to read uh, through the end of the chapter. And it says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine. So there wasn't beer back there, or hard liquor. It was grape juice that turned hard. It was hard grape. It was wine. Very, uh, very much so alcohol-induced uh, 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 he, he was. It says, He commanded... Uh, Mehuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, Ag uh, uh, Abagatha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Azarias the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal, uh, Decker out, and to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look upon. Uh, but the queen, Vashti, refused to come at the king's commandments, command by the chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Wonder why he got so mad. Let's just stop right there and say it's because he was full of alcohol. Alcohol makes people act irrationally. Uh, we ought to be filled with the spirit, not filled with spirits uh, of, of, of the land. Verse 13, Then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, isn't this interesting, they're not very wise, for so the king's manner toward all that knew law and judgment, and the next unto him was uh, Karshia, Shina, uh, Shithar, uh, Damtha, Tarshus, Mears, uh, Marcina, and Mimukin, remember that name, the seven princes of Persia, Media, and saw the king's face, in which sat the first in the kingdom. Uh, what shall we do unto Queen Vashti according to the law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Azarias by the chamberlains. So they kind of got together and they said, what should we do? This woman, this, your, your queen hasn't obeyed your voice to, to show her body off. What do we need to do? He sought for counsel. In verse 16, and Mimukin, there's always a, a leader, Answered before the king and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes. He said, she's messed us up too. 
uh, Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also unto the princes and to all the people that are in the province, in all the provinces of King Azarias. Uh, for this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husband, husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported. The king, Azarias, commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Now, right there, they didn't tell the whole story. They're, they're, they're blowing things up. They're, they're leaving things out. They're not doing what they are supposed to be. They're not honest. Why? Because they're liquored up. They're, they're drunk. They're with wine. They've allowed, they're allowed something other than the Holy Ghost of God uh, to help them. And so, in verse, uh, it says, thus, thus shall arise too much contempt and wrath. So they're afraid that what will happen is that uh, the word will get around that Vashti didn't obey the king and then all the women uh, in the land is going to re rebel against their husbands because uh, they're a bunch of selfish, full of wine people. They're all full of themselves. So verse 19, if it please the king. Now, uh, um, Mimica is the one that's saying this. If it please the king, let there go out a royal commandment from him and let... It be written among the law of the Persians and the Medes that it be not altered. And so we're talking about laws too, all these laws. Uh, you know, Azarias, get a law that you can drink. And uh, Azarias, uh, a kind of unstated law that if I command my woman to come to me, she better come to me and do what I tell her to do. And now there's a law they're writing, uh, laws that they're writing in their own life, in their own mind, in their own heart, saying, well, I'm going to be able to do this. And they're, they're writing these new laws that, uh, shouldn't be altered, that Vashti come no more before the king Azarias, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all the empire, for it was great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. Boy, they had some, they had some motive behind writing these laws, didn't they? And the saying pleased the king and the princes, and the king did according to the word of Mimucan. Isn't that interesting? The king had authority, but he's not in his right mind. Wonder why? Oh, he's just drinking a little bit. He, there's a law that says you're supposed to. You, you can. You can do that. For he sent letters. Now then he, he tops it all off. He sends letter out. Today it'd be emails and FaceTimes and, and, and all the different Instagrams and Facebook and all that. He sent letters in all the king's provinces and to every province according to the writing thereof and all the people after their language, but that every man should bear rule in his ha own house. That's right. You better bear rule. And that it should be published according to the language of of every people. Let's pray for a moment. Father, we do need help discerning and, Lord, distributing this truth to your people that are listening, that are viewing, that will watch later. God, I pray that you would help me uh, release my own will and, and that I would allow you to use me to preach what this, these people, our people, need here today. Lord, thank you for the opportunity. Help me, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this book has many different lessons that we can learn from in these verses. Uh, they deal with relationships. I want you to notice what we just read. There's lots of relationships going on. There's the relationship between the king and the queen, the relationship between the king and the chamberlains, and the queen and the chamberlains, the relationship between the king, queen, and, and all the princes, and, and all the, the rulers, and even the people of all the provinces. There's relationships. We have, we have close relationships, and we have uh, some that aren't so close. But you'll notice in these verses, they deal with specifically uh, the relationship of the king and the queen. And that how bad rules, wicked rules, sinful rules, or we can say laws that, uh, that were written down, that were established, you look at how bad the rules, the laws are written, how bad advice, and how bad alcohol destroys relationships. How all these bad rules, bad laws destroy relationships. Because the bad rules and the bad laws uh, granted liberty, it liberated people to do what they want to do in their own sight, to, 
to have pleasure. And when you do everything in your own sight to have pleasure, you will destroy relationships. In this time, the commitment of holy marriage was not found uh, uh, like we would find it today, I would hope. Uh, the men treated the women as property. The king could have pretty much anyone he wanted, but he did uh, queen, uh, crown her queen Vashti. Uh, and at some point, uh, it changed. wonder what that was. Uh, did did Azarias, Azarias, did he really love did he really love Vashti? Or was he just doing what the law had stated? You know, you've watched some of the uh, mythical uh, uh, movies and kingdoms and stuff of, of yesteryear where there would be betrothals and, and how uh, the, the princes would take uh, uh, the, the princes of other kingdoms and they would become a king and queen eventually. And so it wasn't based upon love, but it was based upon law. And any time you base a relationship on law and not love, eventually it will go down to the bottom. It will end. And you find in this case that very thing happened. At the same time in this, in this period, we find that uh, what would happen if, if the women would treat the men with great respect and honor, that they would, have, they would be lavished. But it would not be out of love. It would be out of the law. They kind of had to do it. It's really a poor, bad thing, it's a horrible thing to, to be married to somebody or to have a friend uh, that you hold so dear and find out at some point the only reason they married you or the only reason they're your friend is because somebody said you had to do it. There was a law written somewhere. Mom and daddy said you got to marry him or you got to marry her or there's somebody said you better stay friends in order if you're going to get this or that. That's a terrible thing. But if you think about today... Most of the relationships that people have are based upon law. Now, I'm not talking about law of the land. I'm talking about laws that we write ourselves. Uh, this is one of the laws we write. I'll stay their friend as long as they treat me right. Uh, this is a law that we write as, as long as they return my text and as long as they treat me right, I, I'll, I'll remain their friend. But the moment they don't, they don't do what I want them to do. See, those are the laws that the king had written not only for himself, but for everybody else because we want everybody else to act that way because it makes, doesn't make us feel as bad when we do something as stupid as treating someone that's trying to love us, we, we, that's treating them badly and, and treating them through a, a decree that you've written. You find in this time period, commitment was not, was not uh, very popular. They did carry titles of husbands and wives, uh, but there were a rarely a lifelong commitment relationship. Why would, would that be? You could be my, they could be your husband and wife. Why wouldn't it be a lifelong commitment? Because in that time, and, and, and even it went through centuries until Jesus really put some established uh, rules around marriage and made it, uh, I believe God expected uh, that humanity would see that God loves us and we ought to love as He loves us, but humankind, the sinful nature didn't. And you find what happened is people would get married, but if the woman didn't do right, if the woman didn't look right after a period of time, didn't please her husband, or if the husband didn't please the wife, they could leave. they just leave. You know, in the New Testament, Moses gave the bill of divorcement for hardness of their hearts. So we know that in Moses' day, there was a time of, of divorcement, there was a breaking of that commitment. But today, uh, we heard a, a young preacher talk about the marriage divorce rates down to 35%. I'll trust that his statistic is correct. So, you, man, it used to be 50%. <clears throat> but he made a true statement uh, that down to 35 because people aren't committing no anymore. They just shack up. Uh, why buy the cow when you get the milk for free as the old uh, cliche old saying goes. So this relationship would be destroyed between the king and the queen by sin. Just like every relationship. If you have had relationships in the past, friends, platonic, or marriages, you know why your marriage is in? It's sin. It's plain and simple, sin. Uh, don't want to forgive, that you based your marriage on this. You said, I'll love you. I stop loving you. That sounds like a country song. I stop loving her today, right, Junior? <laughs> uh, old country song. Uh, they, they say, as soon as you stop doing this, or I'm leaving you because 
because you didn't do this, you don't do that no more. He said, those are all laws. Those are rules that you've written down. Uh, the reason we ought to stay committed is because we made a commitment to God. We made a commitment to God that we're going to stay with this person for all, for all of our life till death do us part. And then you can be happy if you don't like them in heaven. You won't be together. Amen. There's no marriage given in heaven. <laughs> So the relationship between the king and the queen was like many uh, of today, based on laws, rules made up to fit personal desires uh, by the king or by the man or by the woman. Uh, lifelong commitment based on love and forgiveness was rare. And I know it can be hard to c consistently love. It can be hard to consistently forgive if somebody does you wrong. But that makes the difference between Christian and lost between the saved and hellbound. That's, that's the difference. Christians forgive, Christians love, and it never fails. But what is it that stemmed all this was that it was writing laws out, personal laws that King Azarias had wrote, and it started off with, I'm gonna, I want to alter my mental state. Now this is, this is kind of just a thought, not a point. I want to alter my mental state. So what are we going to do? Six months out of the year, we're going to have a party. Because I, I, it's, it's boring in Brunswick County. We're going to have a party. And we're going to invite everybody around. And the, on the books, it's going to say, let's drink. A little wine. A little bit of wine. Just drink. Let's have a party. And let's get our wives out here and get them in scantily dressed clothes and dance around. And let me show off my property. Because that's really where his mindset was at. You see... God wants us to treat each other based on the commitment and love and forgiveness, not on the laws that we write that gratify our flesh. So the law allowed for alcohol, verse number 8, I just I read to you already, in, in the relationship. And when you have someone or something in your relationship that is evil, that is sinful, that alters your mental state, now get a hold of this, your, your situation may not be alcohol tonight that's destroying your relationships. Your situation may not be a drug, but your situation may be you've allowed somebody else, a person, uh, an activity, uh, vacationing all the time, wasting money, bitterness, all sorts of things, sin. You've allowed sin to enter a relationship and that sin uh, is causing more sin. And you know what the Bible says we'll get to in James that eventually it will bring death. It will destroy. So alcohol, in this case, caused sin. Some would say the Baptists are just drinking their social, drinking a little wine. Let's go to the winery. Let's go to the brewery. Let's, let's, uh, let's own a restaurant or a club that uh, it sells alcohol. You know, We don't want people to get drunk. I think it's only a sin to get drunk and, and all that. No, how about the appearance of evil? How about to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not? It's sin. How about reading some statistics on what alcohol has done to people's lives over the years? How about look at that? And instead of what you want in your pocketbook, and you know you make money uh, that way. There's a lot of people that invest in hotels and, and uh, hotels and casinos and in alcohol because it sells, because it's sinful activity. And there's more people doing sinful activity than there is spiritual activity. So this, this alcohol calls sin, and it, I'll read it again. On the seventh day, when the, 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 when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded his chamberlains, uh, Mehuman, Bezba, Harbona, Bigtha, uh, Abagatha, Zethar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served the, uh, in the presence of Azarias the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the royal, crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was lit, fair to look upon. So these chamberlains were what's called eunuchs. And a eunuch was some, some they were male. And they were not female. They were, they were men that were uh, incapable of reproducing. Uh, they were either born with, uh, without the, the physical uh, parts to do that, or they were made a eunuch uh, in, in such ways as you can make castration, to be pretty blunt. And, and, uh, they can, and sometimes they did castrate men. Because these men would not treat the king's women uh, badly or be looking, tried to lay with them and, and do those uh, w wicked things. So while the king was in an intoxicated state, his mental state was altered by this alcohol 
and it altered it not for the good. You have never met people that are drunk or tipsy uh, or drinking wine that's looking to do good. They, they, they take alcohol or they take drugs or they take something that's going to mentally change their mind for the bad. They don't ever look for something that's going to change their mind for the good. And so in this altered state, what does he do? He causes others to sin. He orders others to participate in a plan that he had to actually humiliate his wife. But it would turn him on. You understand that? You see, in his intoxicated state, he was under the influence of sin. And sin begets more sin. We know James 1.14, but every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. So what was happening is he was, he was full of sin. He was full of himself. And he caused uh, the, the Chamberlains to be involved to try to get Vashti, innocent bystander at this point. She really hadn't done, last week we talked about she, she had the party and she didn't consult her husband. Uh, but that was just speculation. She may have had a rule. She may have had a per diem to have the party. But nevertheless, it never said he was mad. But he was so drunk, he wanted to display her what he owned. And that's what he really thought of her. God help you if you think you own your wife. God help you if you think you own your husband. Some of y'all treat each other that way. Treat them like a piece of dirt, like, a, like an old beat up car. Don't ever take care of them. Oh me, oh my, uh, God help us, right? In Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, Where, Wherefore be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, uh, but be filled with the Spirit. To be filled with the Spirit. The law that Azarias wrote, his own law, caused him to drink. Isn't that convenient? Isn't it convenient to say, Well, I write, I've got a law in my life. And my life says I'm going to get drunk every weekend. Or my, the law in my life says I'm going to do this, smoke pot or do whatever. Uh, it caused him to give sinful orders. And sin always loves company. The king, I want you to understand this very, very specifically, didn't love the queen. He loved power. Does that sound familiar? Do you think our government loves the people? Oh no, they love power. The king didn't love the queen. If he did, he would not have wanted to display her beauty for others to look at because in that time, that was even a, a, a don't do, you don't do those things. Uh, they did have a, a level of modesty and that was something that especially the queen would not display her beauty. They would actually robe her uh, in such a way to where her, that people couldn't lust after her. Now I know, let me just hit home a little bit. I know some of you men, you let your wives put on stuff and you like it when other men look at your wives, look at their hind end and the front end and the back end and all that stuff. And some of them ain't much to look at. Say amen there. Uh, but that you like it. And you women, you like it, everybody. You like the display that's what's for sale because that's exactly, you've written a law in your own heart saying that, hey, I've got a figure, I'm going to show it off. And I'm going to show my kids' figures off. I'm going to let them look like a bunch of loose losers. And that's exactly what this is going to be. Because it's not love. Love tells you, I don't want anybody to lust after you. Love doesn't tell you to strip down and party in front of everybody and drink. I know some people in this very church that justify drinking. Some that's come and gone that were drinking and publicizing it on the internet. That knew better. That have, have preachers in the family. They know better. Been in church a long time. They know better. And it destroys. It destroyed relationships. Alcohol controlled his actions. It caused him to disrespect the queen. Caused him to disrespect the queen. How about that? Disrespect. Evil laws liberate people to do stupid, stupid things. Evil laws that people write for themselves liberate. Liberate. You justify yourself to do these dumb things. Did Azarias uh, lose a good thing? Yes, he did. Did he look like a fool? Yes, he did. Uh, it was terrible. It was, did he hurt Vashti? I'm sure he did. He did a stupid thing. They are slowly today legalizing marijuana. And uh, hey, it's, it's an it's a herb of the field. I'm not talking about a doctor prescribed medicine. All the medicines we have come out of the ground some way, shape, or form. They're chemicals. I get that. But people want to sit in a room, rolling up a doobie, and smoke it until they, they're out of this world. And they say, oh, my back don't hurt. Or nothing else hurts either. 
except your bank account and your relationships because now you're a pothead or you're a pillhead and it's sin. Sin destroys. Uh, alcohol destroys. Uh, alcohol and pills and all that dope, it causes sin. And that sin destroys relationships. And it starts off with laws that we write in our own heart. There's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the ways thereof lead unto death. They're slowly destroying relationships. It may ruin a relationship through embarrassing requests, these, these laws that you write. He, he, obviously, the Chamberlains came to Vashti and said, Vashti, come on, we're going to put the crown royal on you. Come on here. The, you, you, the king wants you to prance around and show how, how nice you look. How, and she probably said, over my dead body, I ain't doing that. And good for her, amen, good for her. God bless her, amen, wherever she may be. And it, it caused a, a embarrassing request. It caused strife. It caused bitterness. It's, it causes, uh, in our society, when you, when you allow different things to cause sin, you know what? It causes cancers, uh, like smoking all the time and, and wasting money. People don't have nickels to rub together because they're buying all this dope and alcohol and pills. And, and people buy more, more dope than anything else today, I think. It creates tensions within the church and within relationships. It, just because it might be legal doesn't make it right. Amen. Just because the government said it might be legal. I talked to one person said uh, a long time ago, they said, I hope to God they don't legalize marijuana in North Carolina because he said he'd be a pothead again. And it's sad to say that your faith would be that weak that you hope not that wouldn't happen. But uh, when people base their relationship on what's legal under their law, it's the beginning of the end. The evil laws that the king had made and the evil laws that he lived by destroyed his relationship with the queen. Now understand this. These were people in leadership and in power. And he made these laws. He put her in an embarrassing situation. And because he was drunk, because he was intoxicated, his mental state was altered, he got ticked off to the place where he said, let me get some advice from some liberals and he goes to the government and he says, Princess, what should I do? And they said, man, we got to take care of her. She's going to mess things up for everybody. She's the queen. Everybody, they get, they get word of that, man. That, man, our wives aren't going to be in subjection to us no more. I can't tell my wife to do whatever I want to do and treat her like a, a piece of a, a dog. And you see, it's again about law instead of love. Uh, that evil law allowed alcoholism to control him and allowed others to control him and you know when you get involved in sinful activities like alcohol and pills and, and whatever, just living it up, you end up getting around a crowd that controls you. You get up, you, you, you begin to realize, I believe, I, I do want to say this, I believe Azariah in his, in his intoxicated state, there was something in the back of his mind based upon what he does later that had made him think, well man, I know this really isn't right. I, I, I can realize, I mean, I'm mad as fire, the Vashti wouldn't do as I command, but I know it ain't right. Well, let me see what these guys say and, and to make sure that I, I can throw it back on them if it, if it goes bad. And that's what you do. You get a whole bunch of other people to make a decision. So when it goes bad, you can say, they did it, they did it, they did it. It was their decision. You don't want to take the blame for yourself. So what, what, did, what happened? Uh, the, evil law, uh, the evil law allowed alcohol to control him, allowed others to control him, and it allowed alcoholism to create selfishness. I already alluded to this a little bit, but look at this selfishness. Let me read this to you. What shall we do unto the queen Vashti according to law because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Azarias by the chamberlains? Now right there, we, if, if some contention happened in a typical marriage today, let's just say Leslie and I, if I asked Leslie not to say, I'm not talking about being drunk and all that, but I just said, uh, Leslie, would you come here? Would you come, well, I want you to come in the room, you know, come in the room, whatever, there, we had some guests and maybe she was, uh, wasn't feeling good or whatever and she told Abby, no, she, tell him I ain't coming. Well, I might could get mad, but do I throw her out because of that? Or maybe do I talk to her later and find out what was going on and find out that may, maybe I wasn't thinking right. Maybe I didn't realize I wasn't considerate. Maybe I was thinking that I should control her rather than loving her. Hello? 
And sometimes that happens today. Hey, it happens on both sides. Some of you women control your husband. They are, they're not henpecked, they're buzzard bit, as Farrell Osborne would say. They control the bank book. They control everything around. And it's not because you gave them control. It's because if they don't have it, uh, they're going to tear you up or leave you because they don't really love you. If they loved you, they'd make sure that everything's done according to Proverbs 31 as a virtuous woman. Man, i got better liberty here. Y'all ain't in this building, amen. <laughs> so alcohol caused more selfishness. So in verse 16, Mimikin answered before the king uh, and the princes, Vashti the queen hath not, done, hath not done wrong unto the king only, but also to the princes and all the people that are in the provinces of the king Azarias. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, uh, so they, they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. Uh, when it shall be reported, the king Azarias uh, commanded Vashti the queen before him to, uh, brought before him, and but she came not likewise. Shall the ladies of Persia and Midia say this day unto the king of of the, the king's princes which have heard of this deed of the queen thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath so, so Mimikin this wonderful friend gave the advice and he what did he do he does what the media does he hypes it up he speculates and he says man you know what if you don't get a, a handle of this right now the word's going to get out in the whole 127 provinces. All these women are going to rise up against their husbands with contempt and wrath and the, the relationships will be destroyed. Now you notice what he's saying. He's saying if we don't, if we don't do something according to our law, uh, then, then our relationships are going to be destroyed. Uh, but on the other hand, the relationship was being destroyed by their law. If they would have sobered up, and said, you know what, I need to love, love my wife, love my mate. And like Christ loves them, then I would do something different. The king's choice to create laws that validated sin had come to a head, had given liberty to all the princes to have that same mentality. And by the way, when you have that mentality in your home where you create laws that say, well, you know, we, we believe it's just part of what the Bible says and we, we don't listen to everything the preacher says. You know, that's his opinion. You create those laws in your children and they'll, they'll grow up being that same way. And some of them will stop coming to church. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, they already have. Because you didn't seem to need to come on Wednesday night and Sunday night and Sunday school. and You didn't seem, hey, it's all right, I'm still a Christian, I don't come. Come on now, this is preaching now. Is there a bend? His queen was not going to be a part of such a display of herself. Interesting to note that a lost lady had more morals than a lot of so-called Christians today. She didn't want to display her body. And I'll hit it again, it's summertime. And some of you women are stripping down quicker than a, someone set on fire. Man, you want everybody to see it. Well, I live at the beach and I'm supposed to be, I can wear this and that. Friend, you ought to think that the law of God, and you love God and God's law more than your own self. You know what happened? The alcohol, what they allowed in their life, by the law that they had written, called, created selfishness. I have fought it for 20 years as a pastor with the same members that still do it. goes in one ear out the other. It doesn't matter to them. And what does it do? Relationships are not as tight as they used to be. Why? Because when you hang around people that don't care about sin in their own life, eventually it will affect you. The king was drunk. He was a selfish, lost person. He allowed self-inflicted laws to govern his relationships. He wrote the laws, and now they were uh, governing his relationships. So he was going to blame the law. And now guess who else blames the law of God? Well, if we didn't have, the, if we didn't have Christians today, we wouldn't have these problems. You, just like those idiots out there that says, if we don't have police, we won't have no riots. Are you foolish? Sometimes you can't fix stupid, can you? And what it is, is people are blinded by their own sin. Parents did not pass along truths in the Word of God to their kids. And they, they've allowed them to live such a life where they can make their own decision. Mimikin, remember that guy? He inflamed the situation with presumptive arguments suggesting that all women would hear the queen refuse uh, what the king would ask and they would, uh, they would do the same, things, same thing and mount up with contempt and wrath and cause trouble if they don't do something. This, the selfishness comes in with the man wanting to control the women. To do what pleases them according to the law that they make up as they go. See, 
The selfishness comes in when men or women control, want to control the other one to do what they want to do to please them according to the law that they make, uh, make up as they go. See, if, if you're someone where your wife brings you a cup of coffee in the morning, wouldn't you? it would be terrible for, for her to get out. It's the only reason she does that because she has to. Because you said back when you got married, woman, you better bring me a cup of coffee. Wouldn't it be terrible? She does it not because she loves you, but because she feels she like she has to. Hmm. Well, Vashti wasn't going to put up with that junk. Amen. When your relationship is based on in love, it changes your actions. In 1 Corinthians 13.4, it says, Charity, which means love, suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. So these laws that uh, uh, Vashti was rebelling against was the law of someone that was ultra-selfish. That was, his mind was altered by alcohol. And by selfishness. Why was he drunk? Why was he, uh, today, why would, uh, why would the husband be on pills? Or why would he be intoxicated with sports or with hunting or, or, or whatever types of activities, vacations or cars or whatever it might be where he's consumed? Why would he be that way? Self, selfishness. So these laws finally... These laws val validated alcohol, in, which inflamed bad decisions. And alcohol caused this last thing, and I think this is terrible. See, uh, when we, we let sin enter in, alcohol caused sin. But the law that we wrote was the sin that we write that says we can or can or do things that are is contrary to God's law. When that enter in, enter ends, it sows discord among the people. Verse 22, For he sent letters into all the provinces and every province according to the writing thereof and to every people after their language and every man should rule, bear rule in his own house that it should be published according to the language of every people. So not only did he write out and send out, but he commanded that there should be a new law that everybody, even in, in different languages, would know that uh, what Vashti did and portrayed her as someone as wicked when in, in my, my particular stand, I think she did a righteous thing and said, no, sir. It's one thing to say, uh, the Chamberlains, go get my wife. I want everybody to meet her. That's another thing to say, I want, I want to display her. Because that's what they, they, they want to do, wicked and ungodly things. The man is the head of the house. We know that biblically. But not governing it according to evil laws, but leading it according to love. Let me say that again. Man is the head of the house. Some of you women don't like that. They say, well, he might be the head, but I'm the neck, and the neck turns the head. You get all chicken neck on everybody. And it's true. There's a lot of, lot of households as reason why the children are disarrayed and all going wild and, and they don't, they're not lovers of God and, and why men are upset all the time and why they try to escape and stuff is because the women, because the man won't rise up and lead the house spiritually. But you don't govern the house according to evil self-installed laws. You rule the house according to love. Leading it by love through the Word of God. In Proverbs 6.14 it says, Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord. So that's what sin does. It begins to build in your heart and it begins to make you froward. It makes you evil. In Proverbs 6.19, a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among the brethren. There was six things the Lord hates, yea, seven that is an abomination. Sowing discord. Causing other people to fall into the same sins. To believe things that's not right. Causing unrest. What is the media doing today? What are a lot of people hyping up things they don't know to be true? We live in a time when living right is wrong and living wrong is right. The, the wicked of humanity destroys relationships with each other. They destroy the relationship with the church. They restore the relationship with God. People are getting mad at each other instead of forgiving each other and loving one another. It's a terrible thing to pass along orders to people that causes contention in the homes and the relationships. We're supposed to love our wives. If you love someone, you would not want, want them to do something wicked or sinful. Amen, preacher. 
Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 25, Husband, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave Himself, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing and water by the Word, that He might present it, present it to Himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. What, what I want to conclude on is, is after, after this took place and Vashti was set aside, and we'll get with next Wednesday, Lord willing, then Esther comes in. We learn of Esther next chapter, chapter 2. And not getting ahead of myself, but we learned something in Esther chapter 2, verse 17, that when I believe he sobered up, the king sobered up, he realized that he had instituted some stupid laws that created a, a destruction of relationships, that it had put the kingdom at unrest. But I thank God that he has a resolution. God always makes sure that there's a, 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 there is a solve a conclusion, a, a result, a positive result in a negative situation. And he had little old Esther on the side, Mordecai on the side, and even in Esther's life lost her parents, and, and Mordecai raised her, and, and here she is on the side, and through this negative, wicked, ungodly thing, his heart was changed because in chapter 1, we see him living a life according to law. In chapter 2, we begin to see his heart change, and he begins to love. Verse 17, it says, And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Wow. Isn't that awesome? This whole book, 10 chapters, is going to be awesome to finish, but I want you to... Th Think of this. Let love rule, not selfish man and wicked laws. Let love rule. We need to love our, uh, the people that we're involved in our life. We love each other, love your neighbor, all those. We, we love God. We love people. And God will bless you if you do that. God bless Esther. And God bless Mordecai. And and we saw what happens to the rest as we get into the chapter next week. The church, our, our church, this church and every church in the world is under fire by the Satan, by the devil and by sin and by loose living and compromising and selfishness and callousness and by discord, sowing discord. We must get back to the old paths. We must get back to the landmarks. We must get back to where we fight for truth and we live right. We cannot ride on just saying, well, God will forgive me. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. God will forgive me. That don't work that way. Friend, I don't believe anybody saved that can just continue to sin and just do it, uh, do it in a, a careless way and say, I don't care. I'm, I'm forgiven. I'm going to heaven. don't matter. I believe that when we sin, God has forgiven us and, we, and God will uh, re restore our relationship if we confess it. But church... We need to bind, bind together by faith, trust Him, and know that in numbers, believing the truth, in God's law, God's love, that it will change lives. Not only lives, personal lives, but our relationships with each other. So I hope you'll do that. Can we pray together now? Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we do ask that You take this message and You drive it home in all our lives. I pray it would hit the ears that need to hear it, Convict the hearts that need to uh, be convicted and it would change people's decisions to, uh, from living in their own law, their own justification, to live in love and make sure they please You more than pleasing themselves. Lord, I want to be pleasers of You more than pleasers of me. Father, do that work in our church, in my life. Help us to never give up. Help us to keep on preaching, keep on serving, keep on loving You and loving each other. Help me to love my wife more than I can ever imagine. Help me love my children. Help me love my family and the church. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. For all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. If God's dealt with your heart and you need some help, some guidance, you got questions, please give me a call, text me. 
uh, 910-471-7822. Uh, make sure you pray for one another this week, and uh, we'll keep in contact with you through one call and through the other avenues. If you need a copy of this message, uh, you can let us know, and we'll get a copy to you. God bless you. Have a great, great evening.